There she is. There she is, ladies and gentlemen, my hero, yeah, Miss Erica Ford. My Hi, dad. my love. Anyone from Rock Safe Streets? I'm, I'm literally on a call with, with <laughs> all the NYPD. Anyone, uh, oh, wow. All right, finish that. I'll put this on hold. You want to finish it? I'll wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take it. Take your time. Watching you at work. Just over here watching you at work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's every day, right? It's every day, Angie. Every day. You see those young folks that, you know, lost their life in the line of duty. And, you know, I was thinking when it, when the, when it first happened, you know, my father died in the Vietnam War. And, I didn't uh, know that, man. Yeah, and he was killed. I was like four years old, right? And so to me, he got killed in a war that he didn't need to be in. Like that was a senseless war. And, and it's just the same as, you know, he chose that career and he never made it back home, right? And, and so I think that's part of my fighting spirit, <laughs> you know, um, my father's legacy. And um, my brother said that to me yesterday. But when I see that young guy and you, his desire was to bring police and community together, you know, and I think that in his legacy, he will. Um, mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it, it had to happen like that, you know. Let, let's, let's tell his story, because as as it's obviously a huge story in New York, and it is a national story uh, and it's just tragic. Um, maybe some people that might be watching that are not from New York might not be as familiar with what happened in New York. So unfortunately, um, officers went to respond to a domestic violence situation. And when they responded to the situation, two of the officers, were, one was talking to the mother, two went to the back room to check on the son who she was having a problem with. When they got to the door, allegedly, the young man started shooting and shot them both in the head. One died instantly, one died today. Um, and then the third officer um, shot back and his, um, his gunshot uh, wound killed the, the individual that was um, in the back room, the son. And so three people died in that domestic violence call. And one of the things that we were just talking, I, I have monthly meetings with all of the chiefs and inspectors out here in Southeast Queens, and we meet on how we can work together. So if there's a domestic violence call, is it somebody that one of us knows? Is it somebody on a block that we can work with so that we can go in and, and, and talk that person off the ledge or intervene in some kind of way? And we've done that. We've done that where they don't have to go and bust down people's door with warrants and, you know, and talk to that individual, make them do a safe surrender. If, if that's what they want, like you're not getting away, right? Where are you going? You don't have no money to run for the rest of your life. You're putting your family in jeopardy, you know? And so we talk individuals into safe surrenders in those type of situation, because once the police come into the door, there's gonna be confrontation because the energy is at a high level, you know, and, and domestic violence situations are one of the most dangerous situations to call. So then you even look at, you know, those two young rookies um, at that call and didn't even know what was coming to them. And so they both lost their life. They were, they were and, young, 22? One was 22 and one was 27. It's just devastating. It is. And it they is. really seem like they really became police officers because they wanted to make a difference between yeah community and the, and policing and, and, you know, heal some of that, like their, their, their intentions from what I've heard and read about um, both of them in their career. Um, it's just, oh, it's horrible. It's devastating. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. and, you know, unfortunately um, through his death, he is going to bring community and police much closer together in terms of how, how things, because the mayor already stood up and, and made some, you know, new changes that is going to make things a little different. Um, so like what? What are, the, what are the changes? Well, it's lifting up our work, number one. Um, mm -hmm. It's allowing our work to be more legitimate and professional, um, to, to allow ev every agency to work with us in the manner in which we need them to work with us so we don't have to go through bureaucracy and spend... A Actually, what he said is we're like the Marines. 
and we don't need to spend time in the bureaucracy of the city where we need to get our resources and go out and do our work. And so just him saying that alone allows the legitimacy of the work that we do and then providing more resources and support in, in various kinds of ways and the tools that we need is always a great thing. I'm sure I've asked you this before, Erica, but how many people do you have as part of your squad, as part of your organization? So um, now we have more. Now we have like 30. Okay. Now we have, which is still not enough, right? It's not and, enough. And it seems like you do so much more. It seems like you do so much with that number of people. Yes. But are they all based, are they spread out through New York or are you mostly in Queens, right? You're based in Queens. So, so I, I'm the architect of what is called the New York City Crisis Management System. So under that umbrella, there's around 60 other organizations like Life Camp. There's SOS, there's Man Up, there's Not Another Child. There's so many different organizations across the five boroughs who work together to co-produce public safety in New York City. Life Camp is one of the organizations in that whole conglomerate of organization, peacekeeping frontline soldiers um, who come together. So like Bat Joe came out the other day and we were all there. It was like a thousand of us on the steps in the Bronx and um, doing, cause we were closing out Peace Week right before that situation happened. And, um, and so just to, to let the city know that there are people who are on the front line and a lot of time they doubt our work, you know, and they say the violence is up. But if, the, if, if we weren't there, there would be so many more situations because we mediate and interrupt. Like just this weekend, we mediated five domestic situations that could have led to those same type of situations, you know, mm -hmm. same type of situations. There's so many situations that we mediate or families that we have to. How do you do that? Like what do you what do you attribute that the six your success to that? Like, how do you do that? It's like, a lot of workers across the town are credible messengers, right? They're formerly incarcerated men and women. They did 16, 20 years, 30 years, but they have the heart and the love and the compassion to connect to these individuals who are in a space of, you know, I'm going to say rage trauma, right? So it's, it's, it's rage about their conditions mixed with the trauma of how they live it, right? Because this ain't happening in Bayside. It ain't happening in Bensonhurst. It's not happening where resources are. It's happening in communities where we don't have community centers, where we don't have access to quality food. And so the people who come on the front line and, and talk to these individuals, really they do it because they respect them and they respect who they are and they're not scared. And so the way that they come at them is a place of like, you know, you're gonna listen to me and not in a, in a disrespectful and demeaning kind of way, but I'm your brother, I'm your uncle, I'm your father, and I'm here to save you, you know, and save you by, yo, wake up, like, what are you doing? And then put you in something that can, like right now we have some young people in drama classes, right? Learning how to act, cause they all wanna be actors after. <laughs> you know? I love that you do that. Yeah. <laughs> learning how to build wealth, right? With 19 keys and, and stuff like that. So they're learning blockchain and, and different stuff. So we're teaching them how to do different things as opposed to just hanging on the block and and, and getting involved in, in this culture of violence. Yeah, it, it seems like the city is, I mean, not just the city. I mean, just, I it think is. violence right now, I think people are just uh, from COVID, they're hungry, they're broke, they're mentally exhausted. Yes. Uh, you know, you, at people's mental states is it's hard to you don't just bounce back out of that. So I think the combination of all of those things are you seeing. I know you said if you guys were not around, the violence would be worse. But because you've been doing this for a lot of years, Erica, I mean, where do you think we're at right now? Like, is this. Is this in just in terms of like where we've been? Like, do you are you looking because. I watch, I, I am sad every time I put the news on him and the news is already sad because it's always negative, yeah. but like, it just feels like it's like, it's wild out here right now. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it feels like that, but it's not like the nineties, right? Okay. It, it's not like the two thousands in the beginning. Okay. Um, okay. The numbers are definitely down. It was a thousand back then killed a year. Um, we we have gone the lowest 300 under 300 in 2017 and was on the trajectory to keep it going like that and then covid happened and a lot of people lost their lives a lot of people lost their money a lot of people lost 
um, the ability to interconnect with other people. And so we weren't able to do the work. And then they were in the house on the internet and internet beef rose, you know, um, a lot of that drill music that gave rise to a lot of the, the beef with each other and just people coming out and just high on everything like you talked about, um, the rage, the death, the loss of money and- the Trauma. Right, and then there's nobody mm -hmm. coming to give you help. Like we can't give people enough help. And so it's a process. The people with all of the subway situations are mentally health individuals. Those people are, they're not, in, they're not sane. I don't know the politically correct thing to say, but right. they're, they're not, not, they're not well. They're not right. well. They're not well. Yeah. So we can't, uh, you know, accredit that to crime. We could accredit it to crime, but you got to get these health, homeless people and mentally. It's a health. mental health crisis. It's for right. sure a mental health crisis. You got to get yeah. them off the train. They can't live on the train because you coming into their house. They're like, you coming in my house, yeah. <laughs> right? So how do we do that? What needs to happen? And have you been, what's your relationship with the new mayor? How do you, Are you hopeful about this administration? And talk Definitely. to me about that. Definitely. I've, I've worked with Eric for years. Like for as many years as I've been doing this work, I've been working with Eric, you know, and, and his team. I've been working with them for as long as I've been working, doing this work. So I, I do have faith in them. I have faith that they're going to do the right thing, that it's a process. Eric has always been Eric. Eric is going to go hard on the left, hard on the right. He's going to go hard on everything because his job is to get it done. And he's going to keep going until he gets it done. And he's he's always been that way. Like it's nothing new. He's always been that way. But if if and but he's building up all of the tools to allow you not to go down that road. And he's not going to allow the police to just come in the community and run rampant and beat people up and throw them off the top of the cars and you know stop and frisk. He's he's not going to do that. And it's a he's twenty days in, mm -hmm. right? Or twenty something days in. Right. And so it's a process. But his heart and his intention that him and his administration is for is for um, I, I don't want to say level level in the playing field, but level in the playing field in the sense that providing people the resources and the oxygen that they need to live a quality life, you know, and to get themselves out of the conditions that they're living in. And those that don't want to. Well, I gave you everything that you had to get, you know, you needed to get out. You, you want to come my way? All right, come on. I got you too. You know, mm -hmm. cause he's going <laughs> to get you right. Yeah. And that's just, you know, you have a choice. You can come and work with one of the New York city crisis management team members in your neighborhood, or you could keep being a knucklehead, you know, but we can't keep trying to give up our community for one or two people who don't ever want to listen. You know, and, and there is those one or two people who don't ever want to listen. They ain't our friends. Right? What do we do? What what do we do to keep people safe amidst that though? Like ah, good question. So yeah. parents, parents gotta play a role, right? Parents gotta check their house. You gotta check your house. You gotta check your children's heart, right? You gotta check their heart. You see how you mm -hmm. look right there? You gotta look in your eyes of your child and see how they feel it. How do you, cause you can look in your children's eyes, see if they high, see if they zoned out, see if they hurting, they mad, they angry, they scared. You can see that. Take some time and look and check your child's heart. Check in their book bags, check under their bed, check in your bushes, check in your mailbox, check in the cabinets, check behind the toilet. What are you checking for? Guns, Guns. drugs, anything that they don't need to have, right? Become secret friends of theirs on social media and start to follow them. Start to look at what's going on in their conversations. Follow their friends. Look at what they're talking about. It's I would far rather your child be mad at you for invading their privacy than you standing over a casket, right? Or you standing in a visiting room at a penitentiary, right? So let's, let's play a, a role together. And then if, if you need more help, reach out. Call us. And who are you looking for? Who do you need? What do you what do we, what do you need from us to support you? We need to make peace cool, mm -hmm. right? Because because if peace ain't cool, homie ain't gonna call and try to get help. They are not gonna come into the, the office in the Bronx or in Staten Island or in Queens, right? Because that shit ain't getting me the girls. It ain't getting me the attention. So if there's ways that we we want to do 
our own, like Russell called me the other day. He's like, we're going to do a tour around, you know, something positive, but how do we come together and, and shift the culture, right? In a way, and sometimes it's not, but we, with the funds that they're giving out, let's pay artists to do a tour that is strictly about peace and positivity, right? And then recruit those young people that want to be, let's give some young people who want an opportunity for freedom, to freedom from all of this violence, to have that opportunity, right? Or just families who've lost so much have an opportunity to just come and scream and have fun and, and be happy for a night. But let's give them the ability. And then in that, we build the culture because you know we've come a long way. We've come a long way, right? I was on the White House lawn. And you know, you was there with us 20 years ago when we started. Yeah. Life, right? <laughs> Well, y'all run that big trophy, but- um, That's crazy, <laughs> that's right. Man, 20 years, wow. This is our 20th anniversary for Life Camp this wow, year. God bless, amazing work. You should get something. I don't know what you should get. You should get, we gotta, we should have like a parade, a Life Camp <laughs> parade, just to salute you for all this work you're doing, man. I always think, in, I think about you when, I don't know, when things seem rough in the city, when the city has a, tra a big tragedy or, you know, a kid gets shot, a baby gets shot in the face, which yeah. is unbelievable, you know, or or these two young cops, they lose their lives trying to make a difference. You know, I think about you because I know it, 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 you know, I know not only it affects all of us, but I know yeah. not only does it affect you, but you're trying to figure out how to resolve and, and the thing how to resolve it. What could we do? Yeah. Like, so it, right. Like like I went to the hospital that night, right? And and as I was going in the door, they was rushing the baby to the OR, exactly. And so that visual, like I can never get that out of my head, you know? Like it, the, the baby's just this big and it's just all of those, you know, it's just why do we just recklessly, like we have to, and, and OGs is out there, right? The, the the big homies is out there, right? And it's, it's uh, we have to come together. Like we gotta bring all of the OGs, the big homies, the influencers, We because it's more of us than it is of them, right? And so I know people were like, they had a problem with Eric Adams saying it's us against the killers, right? But do we want people terrorizing our streets, right? We don't, right? So then, then let's us stand up. If we don't want him to call in more police, and, and do anything or not, let's let us stand up and let's go out in our community and let's talk to these young people. Let's create ways where they could do something different. You know, Fat Joe gave us some jobs um, for some young people at his store. Another, um, Julianne Moore did some, some um, classes, some online master classes, right? Um, 19 Keys did some master classes. So there's different things that different people can do based on just you having me here and having the ability to lift our voice, right? And tell our story and let people understand that there is hope. There is hope. Like, don't let your fear overcome your faith, right? Because faith is a silent whisper that tells you that you got to believe in what you can't see because we've made it through so many things and I'm not a preacher, but I am a teacher. You and caught the Holy Ghost right there. I felt that, I felt everything you just said so deep. I felt that so hard, like you was a preacher and you are preaching, yes. And thank you for that, for real. We can't lose faith, we can't, you know, because then where else do we go, right? Yeah. And yeah. so it's, it's, it's few and it's, it's far between, but it seems so very tragic, yes. It is, it's too tragic for us to even think about, but we're out there and we're working. Everyone is out there working and we're gonna change this tide. We're gonna turn it around. We, you know, if people wanna volunteer, if people wanna become mentors, we're in all five boroughs, we're across the nation. For people who are across the nation, we have organizations in different cities. Baltimore took a, a quadruple homicide the other day. Philly is off the chain. Like, so if people want to volunteer and work, we can place you in organizations to volunteer and work. If you want jobs, people are hiring, like we got from the gamut, you know, um, families who've lost loved one and, and don't have that support, please. We want you to come and allow us to help you heal, allow us to help you go through this process, grow through this process 
and really be there to be able to, to be an advocate or to just be, you know, because so many people can't be after losing a child, you know, and we just, I can't, yeah, I can't imagine. God bless you, Erica, man. (laughs) Take care of yourself too, please. Cause we need you out here. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Angie. Love you. you. And and I'll see you soon. I'm going to post this. I'm going to post the links for everybody to reach out to you. And I hope do, I hope people do. I hope people see this and be inspired to want to get involved and, and support you. And I mean, at the very least, just support, like at the very least post it, send some money if you can. Yep, or yep. maybe you want to volunteer or whatever it is. I just, I hope that you are inspired by Erica's work and, 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 you know, the, the whole bunch of people that she has around there on the ground too, that are doing the same type of work and, and are encouraged to support. And we love you and we appreciate you, mama. Love you too. Bye-bye. Right, we'll talk to you soon. Peace.